Hello everyone. So this video is going to be a little bit different than usual. I'll be talking about the religious group we see in Darkest Dungeon. The Church of the Flame, the Church of the Light, the Order of the Sacred Flame. All different names for this group, but they have the same purpose. To worship the glory of the light and the flame. So before we can do an in-depth analysis of this group, we should probably talk about their real-life equivalents. The Church is based on two major religious groups the Vestal Virgins of Ancient Rome and the Roman Catholic Church, specifically from the 11th to the 13th century. Now, I could sit here for the next several hours breaking down everything about these two religions and the Crusades, but I have other videos I want to make, so I'll just give you a summary, and I encourage you to do some research of your own if you want to learn more. So let's get started. The Vestal Virgins of Rome were priestesses who worshipped the goddess Vesta, the goddess of hearth. Their main purpose was to tend to the sacred flame in the temple, preparing ritual food, and performing various rites. There could be anywhere from four to six Vestals at any given time. They were chosen by the chief priest, and they had to be between the ages of six to ten and serve for a minimum of thirty years. They had to have come from a respected family and have no mental or physical defects. During their time in the Order, they were expected to remain chaste and devoted to Vesta. Failure to keep the flame lit would often result in beatings from the chief priest, and breaking their vow of chastity would result in them being buried alive, since it was forbidden to spill the blood of a Vestal. Vestals were given various privileges and honors such as being able to own property and declare their independence from their fathers. And once their 30-year commitment was fulfilled, they could leave the order and marry. The second influence was the Roman Catholic Church, and I specified from the 11th to 13th century for a reason. This was the time frame for the First and Second Crusade. And a few characters that we play as in Darkest Dungeon are directly referenced from this time period as well. The Crusader is based on Reynald of Chantillon, a crusader during the Second Crusades. The Leper is based on King Baldwin IV, otherwise known as the Leper King. And the Flagellant is based on St. Peter Damien, who introduced flagellation as a form of penance. The Roman Catholic Church follows the belief in the Holy Trinity, which states that there is the Father, the creator of life and all things, the Son, the physical incarnation of God through Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the invisible influence of God, with one God being all three simultaneously. Set down our commandments and sacraments. These include showing penance for your actions, baptism, and last rites. So it would seem that we have the beliefs of the Vestal religion with the practices of the Roman Catholic Church. From here, we can get into what the Church of the Flame is all about. From what we can gather, the Church worships the flame and the light that radiates from it. They have a set of rules and beliefs reinforced by the verse book, which could be their equivalent of the Bible. These include verses such as, verse 6, preserve thy own virtue above all else. Verse 34, Pride is the path to foolishness. Verse 36, the light shines brightest in the darkness. Verse 61, always know, never exceed thy limits. Verse 68, pray to the light, for it will grant you joy. And the one I find most interesting. Verse 12, quick burning fires herald pain and torture. This calls back to the Vestal religion since when the flame would go out, it was seen as a bad omen that the gods abandoned the city and that disaster was coming. So what does this mean in terms of the church in game? Well, I like to think that the longer the flame is lit, the stronger it is. The flame that the Vestal failed to keep lit could have been burning for decades, and by letting it burn out, she invited disaster into the city. There are various factions within the church, and we can divide them into a couple different groups. The main branch are the various monks and nuns. These are the ones we encounter in the abbey, and are the core of their religion. They offer meditation, 
prayer and flagellation as forms of worship and penance. The Crusaders, who act as the warriors for the church, and their quest is to strike down the unholy, the heretics, and the false prophet. The Order of St. Martha's, which is where the Vestals are raised and trained, these warrior nuns are able to act as conduits for the flame and the light, as long as they maintain their purity. The Flagellants, who belong to an extremist branch of the church, they're able to weaponize their suffering and inflict it on others. It's my theory that they still have a trinity of sorts. At one corner we have the flame, which could represent power, as we know the flame has the power to burn away the darkness. On another corner we have the light that radiates from it. The light is much more gentle than the flame. It offers protection and healing. So what is the final corner? I like to think that's the kindling, and I think that's meant to represent humanity. Humanity are the ones who sacrifice themselves to serve the flame. And what's kindling if not a sacrifice to the flame? This is why they say there is power in the blood for those with the fortitude to pay the price. I think it makes an interesting trifecta. The flame provides light, which provides healing and protection for humans who provide service for the flame by keeping it lit. Of course, this is just one interpretation. There are many more. Maybe what they're worshipping isn't as holy as they think. After all, perspective is everything. To some, the church is a beacon of hope. To others, a form of slavery. Maybe it's something else entirely. Something that rivals what lies in the manor. But that's for another time. Have your own interpretation of the church? Tell us about it in the comments. Make sure you subscribe too. We have some pretty interesting stuff coming up. Koala's Creature Journals should be releasing soon, along with the Hellion lore video. I also have plans to release a hero lore on a modded class as well, so keep an eye out for that. And most importantly, thank you for watching.